I am a grandpa, and in our family, Shelly and I are called Papa and Nana. And I, I had a, just a, a great experience with, uh, with half of our grandkids, the, the Snohomish grandkids, this weekend. And I don't know if you've ever had this, this, um, this feeling, but uh, for me, I feel like I'm never done working. So at the, the, just the kind of work I'm in, it's not like, oh, good, I got it done. It's never done. <laughs> and then you add the remodel to it, and it's literally never done. <laughs> Uh, but, but this weekend, I, I had the message basically done by Thursday <clears throat> slash Friday early morning. Uh, and when we got the, the, we got the grandkids, and they were just over with us, and I, I just remember this feeling, I can relax. And I, I don't necessarily relax that much. Uh, are you the kind of person that you have to make yourself relax? Raise your hand. Are you the kind of person you have to make yourself work? <laughs> so we have some of both, some of both in the crowd tonight, today. And I just want you to know, God sees you right where you are. He made you. And for some reason, I just keep feeling to say this today. This is, I haven't started the message yet. But God, God loves you just the way you are. He's not looking for you to measure up so that he will love you. That's not how it works with him. He starts by loving you. That's where it starts. That's where our relationship with God starts. Yes. Would you take that in? Take that into your heart this morning. Take that into your heart. Take that into your head. Let it change your thinking. Hmm. I don't have to claw my way to making God love me. I don't have to white knuckle through something to make him love me. God loves you right now. Right now. God loves you. Lord, help us take that in. Help us take that in, Lord. There's, some, there's someone you're talking to right now, Lord. There's someone you're talking to. Lord, help them to hear. Help them to hear, Lord God, right now. You love them now, already. You love us now. Thank you, Lord. We just receive it. I want to take you on a little bit of a different journey today. And there, is, there are some ways that I see what God has been doing in our church for a long, long time and now that parallel what God was doing with, with and through his people a long, long time ago. And as I, as I began to just to see those, the, the parallels, I'm, I'm very encouraged because I know where God is taking us. I know what he's doing in us, and it's good. For, for the past century, for a hundred years, our congregation has been in existence. You know, it started off with some people just like, we're going we're gonna to plant something, you know, just organize something to help people know about God's love. But throughout that whole time, even though there's been a lot of changes in our congregation, in our church, there, there is, a, there is a, three, a three-sided prize that we've been after. And, and that's one thing that has been consistent in uh, a, a lot of different change. We've been trying to do three things for 100 years. We've been trying to provide a beautiful place to just gather like we're doing today and worship God. That, that's been consistent. We didn't always own a place. Sometimes we rented a place. Sometimes we borrowed a place. Sometimes we moved from here to there. But we've always been trying to just provide a space for people to gather like this and worship God. We, we have always been trying to develop a tight-knit community of people who are growing in their relationship with Jesus. Yeah. That's been consistent. It's looked a lot, we've tried a lot of different ways to accomplish that. And like, like even our, our, our barbecue next week, that is, that is one of the ways that we're trying to form a tight-knit community. And you know what? I haven't always let you see everything with me. I try to be as transparent as I can with you, uh, but I would love it if some of you got to know me too. 
most of my efforts are trying to get to know you. But I would love it if it's a two-way friendship. That's what we really want, is a tight community of people following Jesus together, just trying to grow closer in our relationship with Jesus together. We're better together. The third thing, so a place, a tight-knit community, and the third thing we've been doing consistently for 100 years is to share Jesus with the people in our sphere of influence. Our vision just boils down to just a very simple thing. Our vision is to see you and me, to see every person find real hope and renewed life in the stock market. Is that right? (laughs) We We want to see every person find real hope and renewed life in the president. No? That's not where we're looking? We want to see every person find real hope and renewed life in their job. No. Who are we going to find real hope and renewed life in? Jesus. Jesus. That's our vision. Very simply, that's our vision as a people. And I believe that the Holy Spirit has been leading me to change directions. I wasn't quite done with the last series of messages on Sunday mornings. And Pastor Shelley and I both kind of simultaneously this week said, "Mm, that's done. There's something else God has for us. So I believe that God has something for us today. And today starts just, I picture it being three weeks, we'll see, messages called Building Hope in Life. And I said it specifically that way. That's, that's the end of the, that's, that's the series of message. Building hope in life. Building hope in life. Can you say that? Building hope in life. Yes. So today I want to I, I focus on finish our building, but I want to do it from a spiritual perspective, from the Bible. And then move on to deepen our passion. And then move on to awaken our city. Finish our building, deepen our passion, awaken our city. We, we, our congregation has had, I think, at least five different names. We've been in at least four different locations. But we have persisted by the grace of God, oftentimes against all odds. There were times people prophesied, this church is going down. To me, they, they said that to me. But you know what? This church is not going down. This church is going strong. That's where we're going. <laughs> And even though this is our 100th anniversary year, 2023, we were planted in 1923, where we are in the life of our church is more like year one. It's more like our first year anniversary. Exactly one year ago, we changed our name. And this, this, is, this is a significant time in the life of our congregation. The church... It's not this building. Church is not those walls. Church is not even the remodel. Church is you and me, living, breathing, people following Jesus. So I just want to say, first of all, happy one-year anniversary. Go ahead. You can applaud if you want. Yeah? Thank you, Lord. So I have have just a, a graphic that you would not normally see to show you, but it has been said that typically a church lasts about 50 years. And unless something really drastic happens during that 50 years, it will go down. And churches begin with a dream. It goes through a, a, a period of being established. There's a, there's a peak time of maximum effectiveness. Lots of people find out about Jesus. But then many times, if we're not careful, that sort of gets institutionalized. And then all of a sudden, the way we do stuff becomes more important than who we do stuff for. And then the last word is induction. And that word means beginning. Something new is coming. And it's interesting. Our church has been through two 50-year cycles. At the end of the first 50, I don't know if you're aware of this, our church moved out of downtown, moved up on the hill, changed our name to Calvary Temple. And all of those things, I I believe, I I wasn't here uh, 50 years ago, uh, but I believe those were all very good, solidly God-led attempts to reinvent ourselves because 
you, you, you've got to make some changes if you're going to go anywhere or else you just go down. And so they made those, but there, I, I believe that there were some underlying things, some institutionalization that prevented the necessary work of God in us to really make us all that we can be. So that's at the end of the first 50 years. Now we're at the, at the end of the second 50 years. You know what we did? We packed up from up on the hill, we moved downtown, and we changed our name to Hope and Life Church, a very prophetic name that I still get just as excited about now as when we talked about it a year ago. Uh, I, I love Hope and Life, and that's why I, I didn't want to just call this message Building Hope and Life Church. We're building hope and life in you, in me, in us, in the community. We're building hope and life. And so now, did I show the second? The second let's show the second, the second graphic. So in some ways, we are described as a turnaround church, a church that was heading a certain direction, and now we're going a different direction. And there are some downward things, and we experienced all of those. There, there were some tough times. There were some obstruction and some destruction of relationships, uh, 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 specifically. But now, I believe that where we are is we are on the upswing of the right half. So um, there's uh, construction means like you're start, kind of starting over again. Deconstruction means, okay, you make some tweaks and then you keep going. I believe right now, symbolized by our remodel, we are in reconstruction. And we are just starting to experience production. We are just starting to experience momentum. And since Easter of this year, it's just been a few months, but we've had a, a solid, steady momentum of seeing new people Come to find the love of Jesus Christ. And perhaps some of you are that, are in that group, that you're newer since this past Easter. Praise God for you. We were waiting for you. We were praying for you. And you, just the fact, if you are newer in our congregation, you are encouraging to me and to our congregation because we know we've, we've passed that valley now and we are on the upswing. We're going somewhere. God has taken us somewhere. It's very exciting. Remodeling the building is sort of a, a physical symbol of it. But God is doing something here. He's got a plan for us. He's not letting us go down. He has is, he is taken us to a good place in him. God has provided for us so many times over the years. God has brought us pastors with fresh vision, like, like those pastors 50 years ago that moved us up on the hill. Praise God for them. God has called missionaries out of our, our, our church, like the Kinneys and other people like that, that we, we as a church started, we sent them out. And, and they have gone around the world and they've told millions of people about the love of Jesus. God has done so much. He's still saving souls. He's still healing bodies here in our congregation. And we are so pumped because God always provides for us. There were times, I, I remember um, uh, one, one of our guys about, uh, I don't know, seven or eight years ago that said, Pastor Garen, by September, we will run out of money, and we're going to have to close the doors. And you know what? We didn't. God just kept providing. And here we are, able to pay cash for a new property, for this property, able to pay cash for the remodel. God has provided for us time and time again. And so looking back, I can see how God has been there. He has always provided for us. There were tough times. In the 50s in our church, one of the saddest times of our church history is there was a family of 10 people who perished in a fire. And it was just all at once, there was just two, two family members, the, the dad and a son-in-law, that were, they were someplace else that night and didn't get burned down. What a horrible thing. And yet through that, God was there. Through our toughest, horriblest times, God was there. Providing for us, protecting us, picking up the pieces, comforting us, loving us, and taking us through. Because sometimes life is hard. There, God has been patient with us through all of our seasons. There were times when we put the fun in dysfunctional. <laughs> there were times. And yet God still loved us, just like he does in our families, just like he does in our personal lives. He, God still gives us living water. He still gives us bread from heaven. And I believe that the wilderness wandering 
is a little bit behind us now, and we are going into our promised land. <laughs> that God, God just what God has had in mind is coming to pass, and I'm I'm so happy. We are we are just stepping into the Jordan River, getting ready, heading to the promised land, and 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 we can see God beginning to part the waters. Pretty cool. We stand on the threshold of a new and exciting chapter in our church. Yeah. And, and it's so cool to see the remodel. The remodel is not the new chapter, but it is such a cool picture of it. It's taking something that was and bringing new life to it. And that's what God is doing this. So I want to take us back and, and look at another group of God's people that was going through a similar time. If you have a Bible, would you turn to the book of Nehemiah? If you don't know where that is, who does? Look at the table of contents. <laughs> Table of contents, that's what it's there for. Uh, I use the Bible, uh, Bible app. It's called U version, Y-O-U version. That's great because you got the Bible with you always, and it will read it out loud to you. Very cool thing. But however you got the Bible, get it out, check it out, see if what I'm saying is the truth, and turn to Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 17 to 18. That's where we're going to start. Here's a little context. Someone cried out, Jerusalem has fallen! What's the big deal about Jerusalem? Jerusalem was the city on the whole earth where God said, okay, I'm starting over with a people. And I'm going to show them how to have a relationship with me. I'm going to show them uh, how to worship me. And God said, I'm going to make the glory of my name dwell in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a very important city in God's economy, in God's plan. But someone called out, Jerusalem has fallen. And at that moment, the king of Babylon, a foreign king, had come in with his army, and he broke down the walls of Jerusalem. He took over the city, broke apart the temple, captured the, the leaders, all the nobles, all the, all, all the leading citizens, took them away to another country. They were exiled. They were captured. And it would be another 70 years before the exiled Jews were allowed to come back and rebuild. One group of, of Jewish exiles finally returned, and they began to rebuild the temple. And a leader, a, a spiritual leader named Ezra, got them going on the right track again, reading, the, reading God's law and getting in the Bible again. And he, helped, and he helped restore true worship. But then there, Nehemiah was another Jewish leader who had been taken captive. So he's in a foreign country. And he was honored to be serving as the cupbearer to that foreign king. And he heard the news. He, you know, they had already they'd sent this delegation. Uh, people were there working on rebuilding the temple. But he heard the news after several years. What? The wall around the city is still broken down? And he just grieved so much about that because it meant the, wall, the city was still defenseless. It meant the city was ashamed. The city was disgraced. And he was like, that cannot be for God's holy city, Jerusalem. And so he prayed and prayed. And, and finally he declared, we have to rebuild that wall, the city wall. And so he prayed for favor with that, that, that king that was not a Jewish believer not a Jewish person uh, by ethnicity either. And he prayed, oh God, give me favor. And God heard his prayer. He answered that prayer. And, and he, he, this king just miraculously, miraculously was stirred up by God to protect Nehemiah and a group. I'm going to send a group. He said, I'm going to give you all the supplies, the money, the, the stuff that you need to rebuild that wall. Let's get her done. It's like it just does not happen that way, but it did. God did a miracle, and he said, go restore that place, that city where God lives, and so Nehemiah gets there. He, he, he takes some steps, but then eventually he confronts the, the leaders in Jerusalem and says, hey guys, this is not good, the situation where we are. Verse 17, Nehemiah 2.17, but now I said to them, you know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild. Somebody say, let us rebuild. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. And then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. When, when we at Hope in Life bought this building, the gracious hand of God had been on us. 
In 2015, we proposed selling our church property, but the membership voted no at that time. It was, it was a challenge at the time. It was disappointing. But looking back, I can see how God had his gracious hand on us. In 2019, we voted to sell and pray, and we prayed that a church would buy our previous building up on the hill. The year was now 2020. Remember 2020? Can I just show you the symbol of 2020? Let's just show that picture, if you would, please. <laughs> diamond earrings were out. Toilet paper earrings were in because toilet paper was more precious than diamonds in 2020. We, were, we did a couple of little car trips this weekend, and I said, isn't that one of the Costco's where we got toilet paper in that city? And isn't that Costco one of the toilet places where we got toilet paper in that? Yeah, we were, we were on a toilet paper circuit trying to find toilet paper for the church, and it, it was a crazy time. Well, God answered our prayer, and Transformation Center bought our old building. So a church bought our old building. That was exactly what we prayed on a Wednesday night. I can still remember that prayer, Wednesday night in a prayer gathering. And God answered that prayer. It was amazing. So they brought us an offer in January 2020. So just, I don't know if you remember the timeline, but March 2020, something else happened. <laughs> the pandemic started in Kirkland, <laughs> in the, on, our, on our soil anyway. And uh, so they, they, brought, they brought us an offer. We want to buy your building. Give us some, a little bit of extra time for fundraising, this church said. Okay, great. Well, then they kept extending and extending because it was, you, they couldn't travel. They, they couldn't fundraise. And so we as a congregation prayed God's blessing on that congregation. And the gracious hand of God was upon them. They were able to purchase that property. That was amazing in the middle of a pandemic. And, and because of that, God blessed us with the cash to buy this building, this property. And even interest income. That, it, I, it's so amazing. I just got another notice uh, uh, from our investment company, this, uh, it's a ministry company, this past week. Interest rates are going up I, in the good way on, on our, our savings that we've been using for the remodel. So it's, it's been so good. God has just provided for us so many different ways. During the remodel, I don't know if I've told you this, but uh, I, I have to be, be careful about what I share, but we got four bids to replace our roof, which is going to start happening in about two weeks, so September 11th. Uh, the roof needs to go, and uh, it's, a, it's a very expensive thing. So that's why we got four bids. That's a lot of bids. And um, uh, 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 three companies gave us almost the same bid because it's the right bid. It was a fair bid. But one company, we don't know why, just said, boop, I'm going to give you this bid. And it was like a third less. It, it doesn't make sense. It, because the, the bids up here, that, that's the right bid. But this company gave us this bid. Wow, that is the gracious hand of God is on us. Praise God. And he's been taking care of us every step along the way. He gave us a godly uh, a Christian a project manager. So he is like, Pastor Garen, we're going to save all the money and save all the time we can. That's his, that's his whole mission in life. It's so great. But the gracious hand of God is, is upon us. That's why. And then I already mentioned that we see just God doing stuff in our church, in our people, new, new people coming, being touched and being changed and finding Jesus. God is doing something here. The gracious hand of God is on us. Same chapter in, in Nehemiah, but going on, verse 18, they, when he confronted the leaders, they replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. And, and it, was, it must have been so uh, intimidating is to build a, rebuild a wall around a city. It's not even just start from scratch. Everything's a mess. And they had to clean it up and, re, and build the wall again. In verse 20, I, Nehemiah, replied, the God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. And that's what I, I declare over our church. The God of heaven will help us succeed with exactly what he wants. I don't know if he wants huge crowds. That's not our worry. Our worry is ministering to people one at a time. That's our worry. And God can do whatever he wants with that. That's what success is. Change lives. People that are following Jesus that weren't following him previously. That is success. And I believe the gracious God of heaven will help us succeed. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So when Nehemiah said this to the leaders, 
you are not going to believe who jumped up first to start the construction project on the, on, the, on the walls. The priests, the Jewish priests. They knew nothing about building city walls. But they said, we're, we're doing it. God's calling us to do this. They jumped up and did it. And they set such a good example that amazingly goldsmiths, jewelers, perfume makers, merchants, politicians all jumped in, started slinging stones and rebuilding gates. It was just even that was sort of miraculous that they would all do that. And then in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6, it says at last the wall was completed to half its height around this entire city for the people had worked with enthusiasm. Pretty cool. One of the specific things I noticed that I don't remember ever noticing before, there's little stories about in, in, in Nehemiah, so-and-so built this section of the wall, the northeast corner, so-and-so built this south, but there's one that says, he rebuilt the wall of the pool of Siloam. Do you know what happened there centuries later? Jesus healed a blind man there. So because someone picked up a hammer and prepared a wall, a blind man was healed there. He would never have seen that coming. It's so amazing. But it was, it, it, it was a difficult, long, hard process. And they finally got to the place where all the way around the city, it was halfway built. I believe no gates probably at this point, but the wall halfway built up. And then in uh, Nehemiah 4, chapter 10, uh, chapter 4, verse 10, it says, The people of Judah began to complain. The workers are getting tired. And you know what? No one blames them. There was so much rubble to be removed. We will never be able to build the wall by ourselves. And I don't know if you're picturing a wall. This is a wall that is big enough to house people. It had apartments in it and shops in it, and things like that. The wall was so wide, had a roof. Like, this is a wall. <laughs> Picture more like the, wall, the Great Wall of China, but, you know, a little smaller than that. Uh, verse 11, meanwhile, our enemies, so we're so tired, we've been working so hard. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we'll swoop down on them, and we'll kill them, and we'll end their work. So they're being intimidated and threatened. Verse 12, the Jews who lived near the enemy came and told us again and again, they're going to come. The enemies are coming. The, the foreign armies are going to come. They're going to try to attack us. Well, we have a lot in common with God's people rebuilding the wall. It's been a long wait here for us on two fronts, on the remodel, but also just on, on us getting through those valleys and on to the other side of experiencing God's momentum in our lives, in our church. It's been a long wait for the remodel. We've been working on plans since 2020 because we, our initial plans were before we even uh, bought this. So when we were looking at buying it, we said, okay, architect, show us, can we do something with this building? And then due to budget constraints and rising construction costs and all that stuff, we committed to tackle several of the projects for the remodel ourselves. So the contractor is not doing it all. He's just doing all the hardest stuff. And I, I think back to earlier in this year, uh, many of you came and you volunteered your time and your talent, and we got all kinds of stuff done in the spring. We got the lobby, a bit, just a huge step forward in the lobby, the new, uh, the, pa the painting, the chair rail gone, the fireplace built. Um, we cleared out the garage. You remember the work day where we cleared out the garage in the spring? We just thought, we've already gotten rid of everything, and then there was more to get rid of uh, and go to storage and just go to all those places. We have been working super hard. Many times, though, recently, it's just been uh, two people, Larry and Rose, here just by themselves working on the next projects. Then our main contractor began, and we all went, oh, good, something's being done, <laughs> and it's not us. <laughs> and so that was really exciting, and, and he, they, they've, they've gotten so much done, lots of big progress. In fact, I'm going to show you uh, some photos. They have transformed the kids' wing. That is, uh, She Rock now is up on the new girls' bathroom uh, in, the, in the kids' wing. Super cool. And what else we got in there? This is looking out from... The, uh, from, the, our old, from Kids Church, looking this way, you can see a little exit sign right in the middle. That's right on the other side of that door there. Okay, and the next photo, we've just demoed that uh, door. That's our new door. So if you go out that, that door of the worship center now, 
if you're like me, I go out that door, I'm lost. Because it looks totally different. That now, and I think I've got another angle. That, that is the new door. So this door moved that way 10 feet. And then that door gets demoed tomorrow or this week. And this wall where it says we are better together will be removed uh, this week. So now our worship center is getting a little bit larger. And we're su- super exciting. Do I have any other photos to show? Maybe that's it. Uh, more views there. When, when I got to that door, I was like, where does that door go? It goes into the lobby. And then right beyond that is the door going to the youth room. Oh, so we've removed uh, the, the, the old door that went into kids' church. That, that's gone. So all, all that happened this week. It's pretty exciting. Uh, and uh, by, by next week when you come in, it's going to look different in here too. So super cool. But our contractor is going to be done end of September. So we're actually three quarters of the way through the remodel. And he says, bye-bye, everything else is yours. <laughs> Okay, well, that's exciting. And so all of a sudden now we're, we're, we're highly motivated to, to no longer go, oh, good job, contractor, you're doing so great, buddy. Yeah, you keep going. Now we're going, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I guess we need to pick up our hammers and pick up our paintbrushes and make it happen. And so uh, when they leave at the end of September, we would, it, this remodel would be like half, a halfway built city wall around Jerusalem. Like, we would be at that point. So we do have some other stuff that we got to do. And there is a sequence in which it must be done. We, have to, we need to do some of our projects before they're done in September. So, okay, that's awesome. So well, um, part of the sequence is we need to have our, the main restrooms up, updated, which is our project, before carpet goes in, which is someone else's project. But we have to do our part before that goes in. So nothing changes the, with the flooring, which is going to make a big difference, until we get our part of the sequence done. Uh, another thing that we've got to do is we need to paint the interior of the kids' wing. And so it has to happen at a certain time. It is the weekend of September 8 and 9, right, right in there. It, or 8 to 10 is the Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, for that, uh, for us, we we've got to get the painting done so that they can hang the drop ceiling. Uh, otherwise, either way, the drop ceiling goes in. But one way, we don't have to be careful. <laughs> the other way, we have to mask off miles of drop ceiling. Uh, we don't want to do that. So there's a sequence that will actually make it easier on ourselves. And so then after all, all that stuff, I mean, we need to take off the chair rail in here, paint everything, patch the walls. We, we just moved in so quickly. We ripped <laughs> um, curtain rods out of the wall back there. You can see four million holes on that back wall. Uh, it all needs to be patched and painted. And it's stuff that's so totally doable. We can do it. If, 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 yeah, we can do it. No problem. We're going to enlarge the sound booth just a little bit, build a new stage. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of stuff, and we got to do those things before the audiovisual company can come in and do their thing. So there's all these sequences that are now sort of coming due. So uh, th- this is that time. So I say, let us rebuild. Amen? Let us rebuild. Ne- Nehemiah saw that the people's resolve was sagging, and it's because they had worked so crazy hard. No one blames them. They, they were tired, and the enemy was coming against them. It was, it, was, it was hard. So he encouraged the workers, posted armed guards. He made a plan to sound the alarm. We'll come together. If, any, if we get attacked, we're going to help each other. And God was the wind in their sails, and a miracle happened. In 52 days, volunteers rebuilt the entire wall of Jerusalem. Not just the last half, but the whole thing. 52 days from start to finish. That is, just think of it, no modern equipment, no diesel tractors, no, you know, uh, boulder picker-uppers. It was them. They did it. That was a miracle. And, and I, just, I believe that if we trust God and we put our hand to the task, just think what we could accomplish in 52 days. It's going to be tight, a tight 52 days, but I believe that everything that we need to do to finish the remodel, to finish building the church, the physical plant is here. We can do this. We, we, I, I, I believe it. So I say to us again, let us rebuild. Let us rise up. Sacrifice some weekends, me too, and let's get her done. Let us build hope and life for us. But let us also build hope and life for our children. 
and for the next generations. People 100 years ago did some building that benefited us today, and we're about to do the same thing. Let's build for us. I have a great place to gather and worship. Let's build for our kids, for the next generation. But let's also build for our community that needs a beautiful place to come and find out that Jesus loves them. Imagine, imagine if you built a part or painted a part or remodeled a part of this facility where Jesus did a miracle in the future. And in that very tangible, practical way, you were a part of that miracle. Wow. What an opportunity lies before us right now. Who knows the miracles you could pave the way for. So will you reply like the leaders in Jerusalem? Yes, let's rebuild. When future generations tell your story, the story of Hope and Life 2023, will they look back and say, I'm so glad they rose up and built and got the thing done. I believe, I believe they will. So would you stand to your feet with me? I, I want to pray for you that God, the God who's been with us all this time would continue to be with us going forward. Would you pray with me? Maybe bow your heads. You, know, you don't have to close your eyes to pray, but it does kind of help to shut out distractions. Lord, I just want to thank you so much that for a hundred years, your gracious hand has been on us. I also thank you, Lord, for literally a one-year anniversary where instead of going down, we're going forward. Lord, I thank you so much for this congregation. We're here because of you. You you have taken care of us. You You have planted us here. And Lord, I thank you for every person who's planted in this house. Thank you for every new person. Thank you for every long timer. We could not have done it without them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I just, I, I just uh, see the future. Thank you for every person who's coming, who right now doesn't even know Jesus' love, right now feels lost, confused, doesn't know about the meaning of life. I thank you, Lord, that you are preparing them to come and find you here. Thank you, Lord. Bring them on. Bring them on, Lord. We will lead them to you. We will point them to you, Lord. And Lord, I pray specifically that you would help us, just like you helped those guys uh, centuries ago. I pray that you would help us to finish the wall. Our wall looks like painting projects and uh, demo and cleanup and uh, uh, installing cabinets and all the things that our, our wall looks like. Lord, would you help us to finish our wall, that you would be glorified, that future generations would have a place to find Jesus here. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm just going to be really practical. I just want to ask you, will you, yes you, will you pick up a tool and help rebuild your church? Will you do it? If you're thinking it's going to be someone else and they're thinking that too, then it will be no one else. There's two ways to respond, but this is, a, this is the way I'd like you to ask you if you're in this service to respond. If you will say yes, you will do something on the remodel in the next 52 days. Would you take a Connect card right now? It would inspire me if I see a lot of people reaching for a Connect card. Because <laughs> right now I don't see any. Reach for a Connect card. Reach for it. Take a pen. There's a pen somewhere. Look around. There's a pen. And just write your name, your cell number, especially if we don't already have it. That way I could text you and say, I'll help. That's it. Yeah, You don't have to fill a bunch of stuff out. But just say, I'll help. Many of you have already helped. I'm just asking you to help again. <laughs> Some of you have not yet helped. And I'm asking you, do something physical to build your church. And then you could just leave it on the seat. That'll be fine. And we'll, we'll collect them. All right, just a simple thing. Your name, cell number, or a text, and I'll help. That's it. There's something that uh, 
men, women, old, young can do. There's so many different things. Okay, now let me have your attention back for one more time. Could I pray one more time? Would you just bow your heads for a moment with me? We never want to, to go away from this place without giving you an opportunity to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Why would you want to do that? Because we're all born into sin, and sin has separated us from God. So I want to invite you today to put your faith in Jesus to forgive your sins, to save you and make you new. How do you do that? How do you put your faith in Jesus? Well, you turn away from your sin, turn away from your old life, turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead you. Just start there. That's enough. Just start there. And when you put your faith in Jesus, his Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of you. God lives inside of you. And he's with you always. That's how I can say he never abandons you because he's in, in you always if you invite him in. And so right now, people who have already put their faith in Jesus, they're praying for you right now because right now, under their breath, they're just saying, oh, Jesus, help, help anybody that doesn't yet know you. Help them to put their faith in you right now. They're praying for you right now. And I, want, I just want to invite you, if today you're ready to put your faith in Jesus, if you want to be saved, if you want to become a Christian, be part of God's people, Maybe you've never prayed a prayer like that before, or maybe you have, but you've wandered away, and today's your day to come back. Would you just raise your hand right now? People are, people's heads are bowed in prayer, but by raising your hand, you're saying, Pastor, I want to put my faith in Jesus right now, and I'm just telling you so you pray for me. Is there anybody else that would do that in the room or online? Online, God can see you. I can't see you. All right, would you just repeat a prayer after me and let's support those who are putting their faith in Jesus. Let's pray it out loud. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead. I'll be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And if, if you prayed that prayer today, I want to invite you to just take a very simple, short, easy online course. It's going to get you some fundamentals. Just like in basketball, you got to know the fundamentals. You, you need to know how to throw. You need to know how to dribble. In the Christian life, there's some fundamentals, and we want to just help you with that. It's called the Following Jesus course. And maybe you could tell us how we can how we can find that. Yeah, out in the lobby, you'll see a huge sign. There'll be somebody at that table. Yep, Larry will be there uh, to meet you. And we have a gift bag for you that has more information of how to do that online course as well as a free book to just get you going. All right. Are we ready to just do what he was just talking about even now? <laughs> I know. It's, there's nothing like being practical. Um, so if you can stay, we're going to do a little bit of getting ready for that demo work today. Um, so we're going to take this curtain down. Behind this curtain, we've been hiding a lot, you guys. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of stuff, so we need to move all of that out here. I think we should probably stack the chairs on this side of the room and move them over here. And then we've got plastic that needs to cover everything. TVs, drums, soundboard, all the instruments. So if you can help do that, we would love to have your help. And remember, God loves you. He's with you. He wants to have relationship and you to experience his presence. Okay, have a great week. God bless.